How to avoid the antibiotic apocalypse The threat of a crisis of antibiotic resistance is blamed on doctors and patients but the real culprits are bacteria in the earth. Antibiotics are one of the greatest success stories of modern medicine. They have transformed, and indeed prolonged, our lives. But they may now be endangering lives, too. Bacteria are rapidly developing resistance to antibiotics and the length of time that antibiotics will remain effective. Doctors prescribing antibiotics for patients who do not need them, patients not completing the course of antibiotics they have been prescribed. But this is looking for the cause of the problem in the wrong place. We shouldn't look just at what is happening in our surgeries, but also at the natural environment, and how we interact with it. Soil in particular plays an important role, just one gram of soil contains more bacteria than there are people on the planet, and these bacteria each naturally produce antibiotics to maintain a competitive edge over one another. By adding our own man-made antibiotics into the mix, the soil becomes the perfect breeding ground for new antibiotic resistance strains to arise, as proximity makes it easy for the bacteria to exchange genes which is how they evolve. And this is an important consideration because the amount of antibiotics that enter our soil systems every year, from a variety of sources, is vast. For example, more than half of all antibiotics used are given by us to animals. In the UK alone, about 350 to 400 tons of antibiotics were used each year in food producing animals between 2006 and 2011, and an estimated 70 m tons of animal manure, which would contain the residues of those antibiotics, was spread onto agricultural land each year as well. And this is just one part of an ongoing cycle, the new antibiotic resistant bacteria in the soil can potentially enter our food chain when we eat the harvested crops and then, when they reach our gut, they can evolve again when they mix with the microflora that naturally live there. Once we excrete these bacteria, they enter our sewerage system and, from there, they can re-enter agricultural systems when sludge is used as a fertilizer, or when wastewater is used for irrigation. As well as agriculture and wastewater treatment, the manufacturing industry needs to take some responsibility for the current threat. Davis has called for pharmaceutical companies to invest in developing new antibiotics, but current manufacturing practice in some countries is actually exacerbating the problem. We have a dangerous substances directive in Europe, which lists 129 substances that are regarded as so toxic that efforts to control their release should be given the highest priority. However, antibiotics are not on that list, so are not routinely tested for, and their high prevalence in the environment has received little attention. This is a particular problem in countries such as China and India where antibiotic manufacturing occurs on a substantial scale but regulations tend to be somewhat lax. Rivers and soils become contaminated when wastewater from these factories is untreated, and both are widely used by humans and animals, for drinking, washing and irrigation. Such places may seem far away and of no consequence to us here, but we travel much more widely these days which means these pathogens are constantly crossing continents and building resistance in new ways. To prepare for the threat of antibiotic resistance, we can't just sit and wait for people to change their behavior. It is clear that if we take action in one area, but not another, it will do little to control antibiotic resistance because so many factors are interdependent. So we need to work collaboratively, and internationally.